Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to walk through the process of creating a smart building in World. We're going to create a map scene to contain our smart building. We're going to show you how to add some custom points of interest with interactive embedded HTML content. And we're going to show how, you, how to link those two entities in the map by entity highlighting. Everything that I'm going to show you today uses the free design tools that are available to every user of World, um, even if you're on the free starter plan. We'll be making the smart building accessible to users through our free web maps and mobile apps. So you don't need to create your own World app to share your smart building with your users. If you want to try this for yourself, you can follow the steps in the video and we'll soon be making a quick guide available on the website um, that can walk you through step by step. So the only prerequisite that's needed for you to follow through this tutorial um, is an indoor map created in the world platform. Um, so if you want to create an indoor map of your own, there are instructions for how to do that on the website. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to use one of the many uh, freely available public buildings that exist on the world platform already. So to start with, um, we're going to open up the map designer tool, um, which you can see here on your world homepage. And we're going to create ourselves a new map. So map designer allows you to create what we call map scenes. A uh, map scene is like the entry point for your users into world. It allows you to set where they start in world and for you to select what content's going to be available to users as well. Um, so for this example, we're going to create a new map and we're going to call it uh, My Smart Office as that's what we're going to be creating. Uh, so we want to set the location where users will start. Um, you can do that by navigating around um, or you can search to find other locations in world. And when you're happy, you just select use current map view and that will lock that starting location into your map scene. It's even possible to start inside a building. For example, this office building here, Westport House, um, which is what we're gonna use for this example. But for now, um, we're gonna start in a location just outside uh, the office building. So we click use current map view and the location and the view uh, settings are saved there. To see how that looks to users, and um, we're gonna take this map URL short link over here. Um, so every map scene you create has an associated URL that you can share with your users so they can access your content. So if we just copy that um, and we'll open it up in a new tab so that we can see how it looks to users. So once the content streams in, you'll see that they're starting outside uh, the office building that we're interested in. Um, and by clicking on the enter indoor map button, um, they can go inside and they can navigate their way around. And so we'll leave that open for now because we'll go back uh, to have a look at the content as we add it um, in the map scenes view. So now we have our map scene um, and we set the initial coordinates. The next step will be adding some custom data to our map. Um, and we do that using the Places Designer tool. So that's another one of the web tools available from your world homepage. So if we go into Places Designer um, and we're going to create ourselves a new collection. So um, Places or um, Poise as we sometimes call them, uh, these are how you associate new data uh, with your application. So we're going to create um, a, a set here and give it a name. Uh, we'll call it Poise for Smart Office. And we can associate it with the map scene that we created. So it was called My Smart Office. And we confirm new collection. Okay. Um, and if we just pop back into Map Designer, um, we can see that the Poise for Smart Office has been created and associated um, with that map scene. So any uh, content that we add to our Places collection uh, using Places Designer will immediately become accessible to users um, who are accessing our map scene. So to show you how to uh, add Poise, we're going to start with creating um, a meeting room. Uh, so we're going to create a new place marker here and drag it over to the meeting room that we're interested in. Let's just get rid of uh, that extra one. 
So uh, the meeting room point that we've created there, we're going to give it a name um, and we're going to call this one meeting room one. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a tag uh, to say what type of place it is. So there's a whole bunch of uh, tags available, uh, ready created in world, um, and there's one for meeting rooms. Uh, and you'll see when we add that and drag it to the top of the list of tags, then the icon associated with the POI changes. Okay, so um, now that we've created that, let's go back into our map scene uh, and check that it's available. And um, so you access poise through the search functionality. And if we just run an around me search, and um, what we'll see is the poise that we just created for the meeting room appears in the search drop down and it's visible here. And users can click on it and they'll see some basic information the name and the tags that we associate with it. So now we want to add a little bit more information to our poise. So to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a custom HTML POI card. Um, so this is our way of associating additional content with that POI when users click on it. Uh, so to do that, um, we just need to go into the JSON editor here. And we've got a user data field there where we can include additional data. So in this case, we're going to add a custom view. And this is just a URL for some content that's gonna be displayed when users click on the meeting room POI. Um, and we can also set the custom view height, so how much space is allocated to it um, when the POI card pops open. So this is the way that you can introduce your own content into World and associate it with particular locations. Um, so in this example, uh, you know, this is just a, a piece of static content served from a website, um, but it could be something much more complex, for example, a web app um, that pulls data in and displays it. So let's just go back into our map scene now um, and check how that appears. So let's run our search again, select our meeting room. And this time when we click on it, the POI card pops in and the HTML content we just specified is loaded. And um, so you can see here, there's some basic information about the meeting room. And we've also got an example of a calendar integration here. Um, so you can see when the meeting room uh, is available for booking um, or when it's occupied. Um, so th this uh, here is just your know, dummy data, but you could imagine in a real application, um, you could do something like integrate with Google Calendar or uh, Microsoft Exchange Server um, to provide real uh, data and also booking available. So you can add any interactive features you want in your, uh, in your HTML fragment, which is embedded here. So let's go back to Places Designer now and add some additional poise. So we're gonna add, uh, this time, uh, a person. So let's just um, put them over here. Um, this person uh, is going to be one of our employees, uh, Oliver, and we're gonna tag him um, as a person. Okay, and when we put that tag at the top, you see the uh, icon over the POI changes. We're also gonna add um, some custom HTML content uh, related uh, to, to Oliver. And so that's like a little person pop-up card that's gonna appear when he's clicked on. Um, and we're also gonna add a POI for our uh, world reception. So we'll just name that uh, world reception. Again, we have a appropriate tag, which will set the icon for the POI. And we'll add our custom HTML content in the user data. Okay, so now we've got three POIs. Um, let's go back in uh, to the map scene and have a look at them. So we can find them all via the around me search. If we click on the person uh, and open the POI card, again, we see something similar to the meeting room with an example calendar integration and some information about the person. If we uh, open the reception POI card, um, again, we've got contact information uh, for World uh, and an example of a feedback widget at the bottom here. So this is just one example of the kind of things uh, that you can include in POI cards to make your map more interactive for your users. And we'll also see um, while we're here that we can search um, via free text searches. 
And um, so we see there it matches world reception, but it's also done a category search as well for any reception poise in the area. So there's various ways that users can find, uh, can find your poise. So now we've got um, these created, we're gonna show you how to uh, highlight rooms and assets in the map. So this is a way of making your map a little bit more dynamic um, and make objects easier to find for users. Um, so this is done again using the JSON editor in Places Designer. So we're gonna go back to meeting room one um, and we're gonna add a highlight in the room uh, where that point is located. So to do that, um, we need to add some additional properties into the user data. Um, so in this case, we just set a highlight with the name of the meeting room. So every object in world has a name associated with it that you set when you create your indoor map. And in this case, it's called meeting room large. Um, and what we're gonna do is set a highlight color, which is just a array of red, green, blue, and an alpha channel values. So this is going to be a transparent green highlight. Um, so now we've set that, if we go straight back into our map scene, um, let's run our search uh, for the meeting room. And we see that when we select it, we get this transparent green highlight appears um, over the surrounding room. It makes it nice and easy for people to see um, what the poise is associated with. It's also possible for us to um, highlight individual entities in the map, not just uh, rooms. Um, so we're gonna show you how to do that by creating a desk poi. So let's start with a new marker here. Um, and we're gonna drag it over to this desk here. So we're gonna give this one a name, we're gonna call it my desk. Um, and we're gonna add some tags. So we'll add a desk tag. Um, there's also some more specific ones. So we're gonna add desk occupied. Um, and when we drag that on the top, what we'll see is we see a desk indicator um, that has a red X on it. So we can clearly see it's occupied. And we also want to add a highlight. And um, so we'll do that in a very, very similar way uh, to the meeting room highlight by adding some information to the user data. In this case, the names of the attributes are entity highlight and entity highlight color. Um, and the name of that desk is 0009. Um, so now that we've done that, um, we will be able to see that one when we do a search um, in our map scene. So we just search for desks. My desk comes up and we see this nice dark red uh, highlight on the desk. One final feature I want to show you in terms of highlighting, it's also possible to associate a POI with a group of assets. Um, so we're gonna create a new one here for uh, a group of desks here. So this is gonna be our art department. And we can give them a tag, which will show that it's a group of people. And similarly to the uh, single desk highlighting, we're going to add the entity highlight and the entity highlight color properties to our user data. So here, instead of just adding a single desk, we give a list of desk names, uh, 12 through to 15, and we're gonna color them all uh, with a transparent blue highlight. So let's just see how that looks. Um, we'll run the around me search, um, which will show us all of the poise that we created. Um, so the three with the custom HTML content, uh, on the POI cards and the three with the highlights. We have a meeting room highlight, a desk highlight, um, and a group of desk highlights. So that brings us to the end of the tutorial. Um, so just to summarize, what we've done is create a map scene um, to give users access to our content. Um, we've associated a places collection with that and added various different types of POIs to that places collection. Uh, we've showed you how to do tagging and naming of your POIs so they appear in search and how to link them to entities in the map uh, with entity highlighting. Thanks for listening.